Greetings, friends. It's an extremely high honor once again to welcome you back to Rick's Garage. Today, what you see before you is my Maxi TPMS service tool. It is the TS501. I posted a video last week using this tool, and I apologize, friends. It happened to be a very lengthy and if I do say so myself, boring video. I happen to be driving along in my truck with one of my German Shepherds and I happened to notice that my TPMS warning light was on. You know that annoying little horseshoe light that comes on when you have a low tire. So I went through the whole rigmarole of diagnosing it, putting air in the tires and test driving it. I wound up determining I had a faulty TPMS sensor in one of my wheels and it involved dismounting the tire and replacing the sensor. And uh, it just uh, occurred to me that some of you out there may be only interested in seeing the TPMS tool in use. So that's what this video is about today. I'm just only going to show how to use this TPMS tool. Now, before I get too far along, I'm going to show you the uh, buttons here and what their functions are. So these buttons here are the uh, navigation buttons. See, I can navigate from one place to another. And when you find where you want to be, you hit the Y button for yes. And if you don't want to be there, you hit the no button. This button down here is the power button. It turns it on and off. And over here is a little help button that gives you useful information if you're having a problem. And the center button here is the trigger button that actually triggers the sensor to transmit its information to the uh, TPMS tool. So just to review, you've got your four navigation buttons, your yes and no button, your power button, and your trigger button. And there's a little help button. So it's fairly simple. One thing that's important, if you just purchased this thing and took it out of the box, you've got to update it before you use it. So you would cursor down to the update symbol and you would plug in the wire that's provided with the device and you would hit yes. And you would follow the prompts on your computer to update the system. Now I made that mistake. I had this thing for a while and I couldn't figure out why I was not able to communicate with the vehicle's computer. And the reason was I just simply hadn't updated. It didn't have the software to do that yet. So when you get out of the box, make sure you update it immediately. So once we've got the device successfully updated, we're going to navigate up to the little horseshoe symbol. And we're going to click yes. Now what we're doing is setting it up for the particular vehicle. So now we're going to scroll till we find Dodge, which I happen to already be on. Because it's a Dodge pickup. And we're going to click yes. And it's, and it's going to give us some options here. And we're going to find our vehicle. And as you can see, I was already on Ram Series. So you scroll down till you find your vehicle. And in our case, it's Ram Series. I'm going to click yes. And then you scroll down till you find the correct year of your uh, vehicle. And I'm already there. I'm at a uh, 2010 to 2012 433 megahertz so we're going to click yes and it says delete existing data yes there must be some data that's already stored in so we want to get rid of that so we're going to click yes and you can see now we're set up to scan the wheels so let's go and do that Okay, now the way this works is you always start with the driver's side front and then you go around the vehicle clockwise. So we do the driver's side front first, then we do the passenger side front, then the passenger side rear, till we come around to the driver's side rear. So we're going to go ahead and uh, press the, I'm going to press this trigger button and we're going to see if it will read the sensor. All right, we got a fairly quick response. We're gonna go around the rest of them one at a time. I'll do that off camera. Okay, um, I hope you can see this, but we've got a little X 
right there beside our uh, passenger front tire. That's the one that has failed. I could not get a response from it. The others, I got fairly quick readings. They were all within uh, range. So it looks like we have one bad sensor on the, on the truck. Okay, friends, uh, as promised, I'm just going to concentrate this video on the use of the TPMS tool. So off camera, I'm going to dismount that tire, replace the sensor, and I'm going to perform a retest, and I'll come back when that's done. Okay, so now we've gone around to each wheel and collected all the data. It's stored in this uh, machine. We're going to plug it into the truck's computer and program this information into the truck's computer. Let's see how it goes. Okay, we're ready to reprogram. We've got this plugged into the truck's computer. So with the key on, we're going to scroll over to right here and we're going to press yes. And then we're going to press diagnostic yes. Communicating with the vehicle. All right, so now we're going to go down to relearn. We're going to hit yes. And it's giving us all the information. We're going to say yes. Relearn, please wait. And it says success. So we're going to click OK and we're done. So I'm going to disconnect it, turn off the key, and we'll find out if that light is out. OK, friends. I was going to take the truck for a little test drive. However, you can see before I left the driveway, the uh, tire warning light is already out. So it looks like the whole operation was a success. So uh, anyway, that's all I've really got today. I want to thank you once again for watching Rick's Garage. Before I go, I'm going to post two videos to your left. Feel free to click on one or the other should you find one of them of interest. And to your right will be a picture of my avatar, my trusty German Shepherd. Feel free to click on that if you wish to subscribe. So thanks once again for watching and we hope to see you all again really, really soon.